These may look like ordinary rovers, but they're actually working as a team, communicating with each other and making decisions to explore. So the robot fleet is completely autonomous. We essentially tell our fleet to go explore and when to come back. They're what's known as swarm robots. And for these students from Polytechnic Montreal's MIST lab, they could be the key to more effectively mapping planets in our solar system. We absolutely believe that Swarm Robotics is the future of uh, space exploration. It's more efficient to have more robots and you're less reliant on a single agent failing. It's these so-called backpacks mounted onto these rovers that make them intelligent. Inbuilt sensors and a computer enable the robots to perceive their environment. And off-the-shelf routers with customized open source software creates a local area network so the rovers can talk to one another. Different types of robots are able to work together using this tech. A lot of our expertise goes into making these backpacks, these active payloads that go on top of the robot. Uh, without it, it's pretty much a car without a driver. Today, the rovers are on a special mission to map this unknown terrain at the Canadian Space Agency's Mars Yard. We've been <laughs> so excited to do this. I know a lot of people have not gone home since midnight for the last couple of days just to get this correct, so <laughs> I hope it goes well. PhD student Rihanna Gagnon Suleiman allocates tasks for the robots in the swarm. But in the end, it's up to the rovers how they get the job done. As the rovers move, they begin mapping the area, slowly creating a picture of the environment. All the students can do now is watch. That's a good one. We have a lot of people, we have 20 plus people in the lab working on completely different components of our system. So we have people working on just connectivity, just networking, just exploration, just energy. The team's Swarm AI technology was developed here on campus. It can be used on pretty much any type of robot and size, and was inspired by some of the natural world's smallest creatures. So when we say swarm, we mean that we draw inspiration from nature, uh, for instance, ant colonies, where a single ant cannot achieve much on its own, but they can coordinate. This one over there at the corner. PhD student Guillaume Ricard focuses on how humans can work with these large swarms. Okay. One, two, three, I got four of them running. <laughs> one key goal is to enable people to interact with robots seamlessly, so through motion, voice, and other natural controls, other than just using a screen or a controller, which we can do today. And one day, even help astronauts. Our focus is on building space technology to enable future missions on the Moon and Mars to map more environments. We can explore caves, we can learn about science on the Moon and Mars, and generally uh, the birth of a solar system and the history of the universe. Professor Giovanni Beltrame, who oversees the project, believes this tech could be used in space in the next decade. I think it will be a game changer for space exploration because it allows us to not only have multiple robots working together, but the ability to do progressive deployment. Back on the Mars yard, the rovers are finishing their mapping. And it's a success. There's so many things that go wrong constantly, and then being here today and being able to show you a functioning system is just like unfathomable to me. With the lessons learned from today, the team will continue to refine their tech. But one thing is for certain. We firmly believe that space is the future. If we really want to preserve humanity and future generations, the answer is space exploration, essentially.